Welcome to Shakespeare Full Circle, a journey of a circuitous nature into the mind of the Bard of Avon, or as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. Well, here we are at the end of Season 1. We have talked about glistering Venetian gold with a side of Danish cruelty, a green-eyed monster proclaiming the world is your oyster, getting too much of a good thing on a seeming wild goose chase, ending up being, not really, a laughing stock. We witnessed Highland fears of the milk of human kindness, calls for a pound of flesh in an Italian court, and cold comfort for a dying king in Lincolnshire. Which begs the question, as we break the ice, whether there has been any rhyme or reason to this journey, as we end up, wait for it, coming full circle. And there was much rejoicing. The origins of the phrase that aptly rounds out our first series comes in Act 5, Scene 3 of Uncle William's 1605 play, King Lear. The sons of Gloucester, two half-brothers, Edgar and the illegitimate Edmund, have met in battle. The Machiavellian villain of the piece, Edmund, lays mortally wounded. The bastard son has plotted throughout the play against his brother as well as society, the conventions that deny him the very station and status he believes is rightfully his. But his quest for revenge finds him dying and resigned to his defeat as realization dawns on him. My name is Edgar, and thy father's son. The gods are just, and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us. The dark and vicious place where thee he got cost him his eyes. The spoken right... Is true. The wheel has come full circle. I am here. Uncle Will is actually revisiting an ancient concept of returning to where one began, illustrating a sense of cosmic completion of a journey. Two thousand years before Shakespeare would put quill to parchment, the Greeks were writing plays about the goddess Fortuna that would spin the wheel of fate, and no matter what the characters attempted, they would end up precisely where they started, only now with an understanding of the futility of their hubris in the face of their destiny. Six years before Lear, Uncle Will explored this concept in As You Like It with The Seven Ages of Man. His melancholy muse, Jaqui, sums up the circular cycle of existence, moving from the helpless infant to the whiny child, the love-struck teenager to the bold and fearless soldier, on to the pudgy, middle-aged judge, then the lean and declining elder, finally coming full circle to the helpless, doddering old man slipping back into infanthood and oblivion. My mother used to use a phrase that was an evolution of the full circle concept, back to square one. That phrase was coined by a fellow countryman of our brilliant bard much later than one would imagine and for a very specific event. The great match at Wembley becomes the sole talking point of the fan. And what a final it promises to be. As radio was in its infancy, there was concern about whether listeners would be able to follow the action on the pitch. A brilliant solution was found. The week before the broadcast, a graph was published in the Radio Times magazine that had a grid of a football pitch with eight numbered squares. Who is the number nine for Everton? He's starting forward. In four now. I think he's about to shoot. In two. And he does. Oh! When the ball was recycled back to the home keeper or over the byline for a goal kick, we ended up... And back to square one. How was that for you, London? That seems okay, dear. Well, alas and alack, my friends, that's all we have time for. Join us again next time for another circuitous journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Today's clips were from the BBC Shakespeare Sessions production of King Lear, with Finden Hertog as Edgar and Paul Higgins as Edmund with a little Michael Palin from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Shakespeare Full Circle is a production of WGTE Public Media. You can learn more and download all episodes at wgte.org slash sfc or wherever you get your podcasts.